Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bifear. So I've got to ask, you ever get the sense that someone's watching you? Because for once, you're not the paranoid one, you're actually correct. The Vanguard has been casually keeping tabs on us and spying on us, just in the same way that they've been spying on the whole ton of people throughout the system. So today we're going to talk about that and discuss some more things about what the Hidden have to say about us and how the Hidden operate. But first, a message from our sponsors over at NVIDIA. You may know NVIDIA as a provider of high-end gaming PC hardware, but that's only half the story. NVIDIA is also responsible for creating some technology at the cutting edge of gaming designed to enhance your experience by improving your graphics or enhancing your machine's performance. NVIDIA were kind enough to send me the Alienware M15 R6 gaming laptop so I could sample some of that technology for myself. This laptop is a powerhouse containing one of NVIDIA's latest 30 series graphics cards, namely a GeForce RTX 3060. It also comes with a half terabyte SSD, an Intel Core i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and a full 15.6 inch HD screen. This is a powerful machine even for a laptop, so it's perfect to show you the power of NVIDIA's technology, including technology that works specifically in Destiny 2. That technology includes NVIDIA Reflex, which helps to reduce input delay from your mouse when you click to actually giving you an input in-game. And that can give you precious microseconds of time where you absolutely need to react with lightning speed. Scorn snipers, after all, will only one-hit you if they can hit you, and good reflexes help you avoid that. Yeah, sorry, that one's very much a pun. The gameplay in the background has one of my guardians taking on the Lucent Hive, and I'm going to be using Void 3.0 here. I've spec'd out my Titan to run a build that makes literally everything explode. Now, under most normal circumstances, I think it'd be fair to say that a build like what I'm running is kind of designed to make your frame rate chug, with massive explosions, lots of lighting effects, particle effects, etc. But with the power of NVIDIA Reflex and the 30 series GPU, we can hold a higher frame rate far more consistently. So now your massive explosions mean just a lot of dead hive, and not a lot of dead frames. To find out more about NVIDIA Reflex and how NVIDIA's 30 series hardware can enhance your gaming experience in Destiny 2, just go ahead and click the link in the description below. Thanks again to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video. Anyway, back to the lore. So how exactly do the Hidden operate? Well, they have a leader in the form of Ikora Ray, and the Hidden all report to her. However, that isn't to say that she has universal authority. She's a respected leader of the city, a member of the Vanguard, a wise sage, and a powerful warlock who is in fact so powerful that she's judged as being a 1 in 3.5 million guardian in terms of raw power, otherwise known as a Sigma 5 classification if I'm not mistaken. But the way that Ikora carries herself and respects her agents lends the air that she has as a sort of first amongst equals. Even if they treat her as a leader, she clearly returns all the respect that they show her. Every hidden agent, including Ikora, is or was a guardian, as best I can tell, and has a unique three-digit identifier number. In communications with each other, hidden agents will reference themselves or other hidden agents in the headers of their communications by their three-digit identifier number, as well as three letters from their names. For example, take a look at the example header below, sent to Ikora from her friend and fellow hidden agent Chalco. When you look at the message, you can see it's from Chalco, indicated by from CHA319 which is Chalco's three-digit identifier number, and three letters from her name. It's also addressed to Ikora, whose three-digit identifier number is 006, and can also be seen below. IKO006 is how that'll read. The Hidden use codes in their communication frequently in order to help hide the nature of their investigations from outsiders, However, once you know who they're talking about, you can track the discussion across all hidden communications, and it's fairly easy to keep up. The hidden keep track of a variety of characters throughout the system, each of them being referred to as VIPs, obviously standing for very important persons. Each VIP is also given an identifier number, with four digits instead of three this time, and it's here that the discussion gets interesting. Numerous individuals around the system from all species are tracked, and each of them has been assigned a unique identifier number. 
Here are a few examples that we know of. VIP number 1121 is the number of the Elixni Turncoat and Scribe of House Judgment, Varex the Loyal. VIP number 3987 is the identifier number of the Elixni Kel of the House of Light, Mithrax, formerly Mithrax the Forsaken. VIP number 4503 is the number of the former leader of the Scorn Barons on the Tangled Shore, Fickrel the Fanatic. VIP number 2029 is the number of the now frozen but perhaps not dead Kel of the House of Salvation, Eremis the Kel of Darkness, formerly Eremis the Ship Stealer. VIP number 2015 is the number of the now dead former Taken King of the Hive Swarms, Oryx. Keep in mind that the Taken King expansion was released in 2015, so yes, that number is a little easter egg too. VIP number 1315 is the number of everyone's favourite grifter and purveyor of hive that you need to bring a sword for. Yeah, I'm talking about the drifter. The Vanguard have been keeping a lot of notes on the drifter. The Hidden do not trust him. Like, they spy on him a lot, and he's pretty sure that he knows about them spying on him. Like, he's had multiple quips with Arnor back and forth, who is a hidden agent. It's... yeah, they don't trust the Drifter. VIP number 3801 is the former Emperor of the Cabal Empire and current ally to the Black Fleet, Emperor Kallus. VIP number 4044 is probably the raid boss Val Kaur, a Red Legion officer who attempted to seize the Leviathan from Kallus before the start of the Forsaken in the Warmind DLC. This took place in the Spire of the Stars raid. VIP 0704 is the always aloof Queen of the Reef, Mara Sov. VIP 7282 is the number assigned to none other than the Witch Queen Savathun herself. And that leads us up to VIP number 2014. If you remember Oryx's identifier number was VIP 2015, it might not surprise you that VIP number 2014 is related to someone and they are from the Year of Destiny's release. Yes, you might well have guessed it. From the title and from the big build-up that I gave you all, VIP number 2014 is us. This is our personal identifier number the identifier number of the Guardian, the player. Yes, the Hidden have been spying on us. So here's all the things they've said about us that we've recovered from various data points that we know of so far. I have no doubt that there are reports that will emerge later down the line, but for our own current knowledge and posterity, these are the things that have been said about us. The first message is between Chalco and Ikora, and it's discussing how we used stasis and therefore the power of darkness to defeat Eremis. They discuss how this has shaken Ikora's trust in us, who she considers a friend. Access most restricted. Message reply from Chalco319 to Ikora006. Subject, personal reply to. Thank you for writing back. Determination is a good word for it. You have a lot on your mind, and I like to hear it. I won't tell you what to do, but I will tell you honestly that you can't stop them from using stasis. It's here to stay. People want change, they want possibility. They'll pick up what they can use. Which leads me to my next big fraught question. You once told me that you consider VIP 2014 to be a real friend, someone you trust implicitly, but number 2014 was forced to use stasis during the events on Europa, I know 2014 is just one of a number of powerful guardians from the Cosmodrome cohort, but there's no question they're an influence on their peers. I hear gossip that 2014's ghost is overwhelmed sometimes by the need to support a guardian who's taken such huge risks. He tends to minimize his own needs rather than push back. He barely even confided in other ghosts about his own repeated possession by the intruders. Silence about such an invasive trauma? While he's working with a Guardian who has been constantly forced close into contact with the Traumatizer? That worries me. How does that feel? Having a trusted friend set the precedent for Guardians using the darkness to save the day. And I know exactly what we are. We're best frenemies, with a history of intense mutual hurt and messy reconciliation, leaving a deep tenderness, as well as an almost impenetrable knot of scars. What could be simpler? With love, 
Chalco. Message ends. Message reply from Ikora006 to Chalco319. One stone can change the whole landscape of the board. Of course, I worry which side played the stone, but guardians make their own fate. Message ends. Chalco and Ikora, as best I can recall, are very good friends, but they just haven't had the opportunity to speak with each other on a regular basis because, well, Ikora is the leader of the Vanguard. I need to go back and remember and see if Ikora had any romantic entanglements with anyone. The I love you in this, I believe, is from Sincere Friends, and I want to say there was someone in Owl Sector who at one point did have some kind of relationship with Ikora, but that might be me misremembering things. It has been years since I read through the Owl Sector transcripts, so don't count on any of that. Don't assume that I know what I'm talking about here on this one. Just know that Chalco and Ikora are very close to each other, either as friends or as something more. I don't know. I haven't got a clue. Don't quote me on any of this. Next, we have a discussion of our acquisition of Truth to Power, the law book which has been going around the community recently. This was a clue given to us about the nature of the Truth to Power law book and how it was clearly something that was trying to lie to us, and therefore we couldn't take it at face value. As a quick note before we begin, this is also an entry from Fenchurch, yes, the same Fenchurch that is related to Tess Everis, the one who runs Eververse and who will not shut up about her uncle. Yeah, this is the same Fenchurch, he is a hidden agent too. So all of his stories are probably legit. Anyway, take a listen. Access restricted. Agents Fenchurch 092. Subject, RE Possible Forgeries. 1. As you all know, an unknown sender delivered six messages to VIP number 2014. These missives were sent via Glimmer using a simple encryption scheme that even a 5530 unit frame could have easily cracked. 2014's ghost took immediate notice of these messages and quietly forwarded them to Ikora006, who then distributed them back to us. 2. In these messages, the sender briefly purports to be none other than Eris223, providing fanciful details regarding her origins as a human woman who grew up in an apparent settlement of old Russia known as St. Petersburg. None of this account sat well with any who actually knows Eris223, not simply because none of her close confederates had any first-hand knowledge or belief that she knew her pre-Guardian origins, but also because she is active in the field and has personally denied sending these messages. That being said, in accordance with our rigor for skeptical inquiry, this agent was dispatched in pursuit of hard evidence to the contrary. 3. I submit to you now photographic and video evidence recovered from civilian family albums, historical archives, and extant ghost recordings originally captured in the Lost City. Behold, Eris223, a child of the Lost City, born to civilian parents in a mortal guardian integrated neighborhood. Behold too, tiny VIP number 1786, though he is almost more unbelievable than Eris223, if you look at his smile. Of the photos, original digital files are unavailable, but radiocarbon dating clearly identifies the earliest prints as more than 300 years old. This is consistent with the timestamp of footage provided by volunteer ghosts who were present during the same period. As to whether the child we believe to be Eris223 is indeed Eris223, please see the second compressed folder attached to this report for full double-blind forensics. 4. In regards to the other personality presented in the messages, Having consulted with AICOM RSPN and AICOM XBLK, both have attested that they have no record of any so-called craft mind designated Medusa. This does not discount the possibility that such a craft mind may exist, but in light of the fact that someone was impersonating our former colleague, it follows that someone may have credibly invented a craft mind as well. We will continue to scour our records for any evidence to the contrary. 5. Like many of those reading, this agent has a strong recommendation about the identity of the sender, but it is beyond the scope of this report. 6. Given the importance of 2014's contributions to our defense efforts, as well as the recent downfall of the Awoken Prince, 
This agent is deeply troubled by the idea that a malicious entity might seek to sway or confuse 2014 in the context of trusted allies. 2014's ghost made brief mention of some kind of waking hallucination in one of the messages. Have we reached out to corroborate that report or provide additional counsel? Message ends. Finally, we have a report made by Eris Morn, which mentions us very briefly. It talks about how we had one of our weekly communions with the pyramids below the Tree of Silver Wings in the Season of Arrivals. This was a common weekly occurrence in the Season of Arrivals, but this particular entry from Eris made specific mention of us where others do not. It should be noted that the lore entry this comes from is from White. Eris says a little bit more under the Tree of Silver Wings when she actually listens to this one. I'm not sure if we have that recording, but if we do, we'll go ahead and play it now. If not, well, Destiny Law Vault, I'm sure, will suffice. Here, take a look. This construction is white. Not like the color, but the absence of color. An indistinct void, overexposed sameness of a thing long dead. The white of bleached bone. Of the Traveler. Eris then follows up and mentions this in the lore entry. Take a listen to what she says. Report by Vanguard Net Encrypted Router The color white exists as a symbol of uniformity, sterility, and sameness. In light, there is only death. The same message VIP 2014 received in the Lunar Pyramid. Again, uninteresting. Personal notes scored in hive leather with a knife. I do not believe the darkness has returned to destroy the Traveler. Surely it could have done that while the Traveler was maimed and stranded. Why wait for a sign that the light had returned to its strength? Perhaps the darkness has returned for us. Guardians are the Traveler's final memorial. We are its selfless legacy and last argument. The color white, stasis, blankness, bone, flag of truce. This is an opportunity. We must do as we did before. Encounter the enemy's power, learn what we can and report back. And if we return with nothing but beautiful and violent words, then we will study them as scripture and find some way to turn the enemy's power to our use, just as it wishes to turn us to its purpose. My wok is filthy with burnt oil. I need baking soda to clean it, but there's no troner on Io. Instead, I bubbled carbon dioxide through sodium hydroxide. It burnt like hive blood, and retrieved enough soda to clean the wok. While I was scrubbing, a young guardian approached, she had an ancient name, Akkadian, perhaps, or Sumerian. She said that she had heard of me and she wanted to help me search for knowledge. I snapped at her to bring me a pineapple. I know, I was cruel. I think the biggest takeaway from all these messages is clearly that we're worth observation and that the Vanguard recognizes not only our contribution to their defense, but also how important our actions have been. We are the axis upon which so many decisions and great moments within the Guardian's history have been decided, from the defeat of Crota and the death of Oryx, to the imprisonment and eventual trial of Scolus the Wolfkel, to the defeat of Dominus Gaul, to the rise against the Reef's fallen prince, to the discovery of the Pyramid on Luna, to the first time when Guardians wielded darkness with stasis. All of these moments are moments that we have suddenly seen unfold before us, and they matter because we have seen them all unfold, we are now worthy of observation. So, maybe we should keep an eye on the hidden as they keep an eye on us. But as per usual, that's going to be it from me today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, go ahead and leave a like, and remember to leave your thoughts down below in the comments section. As per usual, know that your viewership is quite enough for me. And that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Blythe. Porodasia Adastra. I'll see you, Starside. <laughs>